Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We'll get back. We're going to talk about now declaring variables. Okay, declaring variables. Now, a variable is a placeholder for information. So it's like a like a compared to a box, and you stick stuff in the box. Like um, you may have a username, and you want to stick it inside of something like a placeholder. So you stick inside a variable. A username goes into a variable. And uh, in algebra, you use variables a lot, or math, because it, it could be any number. Like x doesn't have a value, but you give it a value. So you have to know what it is, or else it, it means nothing. So visual base for applications reserves the amount of memory necessary to hold the contents of the declared variable. So we declare a variable to to tell the computer, tell VBA what how much memory to hold to have for that variable variable and what kind of data is gonna be stored in the variable. Now we can declare it kind of like when you build an access database, you're calling a field whether it's a a text field or a, a numeric field or a, a boolean field or a uh, a memo field, you're you're telling it what that field is going to hold, what kind of memory, what kind of uh, information that field is going to hold. Well, the same thing with with VBA with your with your variables. You need to tell it. So if you say I want to declare declare dim is like saying dimension. This is a short word for it. Dim str. I guess I want to have a dim str message. Well, they didn't mean anything. Str msg doesn't mean anything. Str message. Uh, Str message doesn't mean anything. So I'm saying dim s your msg as string. Now I'm saying that I want s your message to be uh, to hold text alphanumeric characters. So it can hold like 255 characters. Okay, so dim s your message as string. Now, if I want a uh, variable to hold only numerics, so dim int uh, number as what I want to declare it as, I want to declare it as an integer. So dim, now I just want to store yes, no value, yeah, dim yn as boolean. Notice, this stuff on that comes up is called IntelliSense. You you probably seen that quite a bit, but the the program, if you look at your object browser, it really does queries the object browser and pulls back a uh, the list of values for the for the that uh, start with B. That's why when I boo, it went straight to boolean. Notice that I backspace over this stuff. As it doesn't know, it starts with A, so you're limiting it by say B. Okay, again, I'm just going ahead and saying what type of what type of information is going to be held by by it's your message. And I put include that I could easily I could say dim msg as string. Okay, but I don't know if it holds. I want it to be more precise. I want to be able to say, see it when I'm go looking out the hundred lines of code. I want to say, oh, well, this value is it's a SDR message. That means that it's gonna it's gonna make a naming convention. I know that it's gonna behold only alphanumeric characters, and int number is gonna hold. It's going to hold uh, integer characters. If I say inter intx, okay, as integer, well, right away I know, okay, it's intx. It's not just plain x, 
what X could be, it could hold uh, alphanumerics or it could hold integers, I don't know. Okay, one more thing I didn't include here that's I think critically important is the uh, is how do you store decimal places because integer doesn't allow you to store any decimals. I'm going to change this. Inchy number. Let's say you want to put uh, like like a uh, dollar, one dollar. So dim dbl. Okay, uh, guess what that is? Dim dbl uh, amount. DBL amount as double. Okay, DBL amount as double. That means it holds numerics. That means I can say DBL. I got to say what it what it is, what it will hold, what the value is. So I'm saying dollar. I want it to be a dollar thirty eight. Okay. And then I'm going to say INC number. And of course, this one does not store any type of a decimal place. So if I put a decimal there, it's going to say it's going to be an error message. So dim I in miss box INT number. What is it going to do? Oh, one only. It didn't give me the didn't give me the 0.35 but if I say DBL amount DBL amount then I run it then I get the whole amount 138 okay that's for grins and giggles so again declaring a value variable we set the data type. Okay, remember that data type is like a database. That's why you like access because setting data types is really setting the foundation. It's kind of tedious and monotonous and boring and stuff, but uh, you really have to do it. It's kind of like the housekeeping. Keep it up. Okay, so the variable naming conventions uh, Boolean, BLN, uh, Currency, C, U, R, E, really uh, use DBL instead. You could always format it, but that's kind of like the accepted. Uh, accepted is DBL amount. You don't see that much currency stuff in there, but it, they give it the D anyway. That choice is there. Date, double, integer, long, single string variant. Okay. And then, uh, so then we're going to have dim is another name for dimension. Okay, dim is a short, and that's uh, that's what you'll that's what you have to remember. Dim, not dimension, dim. It's kind of short. Imagine if you had to write dimension all the time, but you're really telling the computer, hey, uh, set aside this amount of memory for an S. For a string variable, and the string variable is called the str method. Okay, set apart this amount of memory computer for an integer value. Something that's going to hold integer values. It's going to be called int number. Okay, again, uh, if you don't put these in there, and it says opposite explicit, look at the error that you're going to get. Okay. It, here I'm gonna get rid of all my variables. I said opposite explicit, but I got rid of uh, I got rid of all my declarations up here, saying variable not defined. It didn't know what it is. Okay, kind of that kind of is a check and balance. If I take it out, uh, opposite explicit, it'll run. But you may you may spell it like this. And wonder why your code is not running right. Uh, well, that would like like this. Push the wrong button. 
okay like DBL mount it runs but it gives you nothing okay to, uh, to get the D so option explicit does have its uh, does have its purpose so variable not defined so option option explicit does this again set it uh, go to tools reference it. if it's already set okay you gotta set it yourself so tools options tools options and then require variable declaration make sure this check they don't be added by default okay so make sure that's there please make sure that's there okay anyway Next, initializing variables. Okay, once you have declared a variable, you need to initialize it. You initialize a variable by assigning a value to it. Okay, we did that by saying, by using a mount. Let me go ahead and take this out. So, we dim, dim dbl amount as double then we initialize it okay dbl amount equals this 1.38 that is initializing the variable okay if you have a if you have a variable called children you say i two children equals 12 if you have a it's your play title as you click it whatever whatever you want this variable to be to be you call it, you you have to you have to initialize it what is it equal to it equals to this if you have it's your message it has to be equal to something or else it'd be blank okay blank now there are certain default values for your uh, for your for your variables so that's what they start off to be so if I let's say I have uh, an integer it should be at zero at the beginning so I had a number I'm going to change this all up I had a number as integer and then to save time I cut and paste okay I didn't initialize it it's zero by default okay it knows automatically it's gonna be zero I didn't again I did not initialize it so uh, now a boolean BLN BLN answer Automatically, it's going to be false. Uh, if I could spell it, answer did BLN answer as Boolean? You want to write a type of as cut and, cut and paste. It's great vegetable. Okay, so did BLN answer as Boolean? Then I'm going to go ahead and look as false automatically. It's just, it's, Starts out as false. You could be double sure, double certain of it by saying "dim BL answer as false." It's already going to be false, but just be double certain. Uh, do it yourself. It's going to be false. It's not going to be false. False. It's going to be false. Straight up false. Okay. Now obtaining values from a user. Okay, BLN answer again. Now, what is B? What if I wanted to have the user tell me what the what the answer is going to be? What their answer is? So, like yes or no, or okay or cancel. Well, again, I can use the message box function to do that. Okay, and that's what this whole this whole next next section is about. Okay, so they again we're going to talk about the the not required parts of the function. 
not required parts of the function. Now the message box has these not required parts. So, so we didn't do that earlier. We just said we just used the basic one, uh, message box BLN answer. Well, what about using the not required parts of it? It can return a value as well. So BLN answer equals message box. Okay, uh, select yes or no. And notice that we have the next one. When I put a comma here, we have all this extra stuff. You notice a comma, we see this. As message box, all these different arguments inside of the message box they may have not considered. Well, anything inside of a bracket means that it's not required. Okay, it's not required. Look at all these other message box items. So I put a comma here. I have this in Chelsea, so it pops down. So I'm going down here. I want something. I got to, okay, the answer is going to be yes or no. So, uh, I'm going to find something that says VBS or no. Okay, and then I want a title. And then user comment is going to be my title. User comment. And then I'm going to end right there because uh, it doesn't matter what it is, but what everything else is. Now, notice that the VBS is result. So, function returns a value. A function returns value. So, message box. Now, if I go down through here, I, I want to get my answer. Be my answer. Select yes or no. User comment. Notice that here I have my my uh, title text. Here I select yes or no. Yes or no. No. Well, it didn't do anything. Doesn't do anything, but it sure did give me the the option here. Select yes or no. Select yes or no. Yes. Well, I don't know what they selected. I just know that they selected yes or no. Okay, we're gonna take a little break, and I'll come back, and we'll uh, finish. We'll finish that up, and uh, you'll be able to find out what the result was and how to test for that result. Okay. Back in a flash.